Okay, V-Man, uh, thanks for the response. Uh, you're a little excited. You have an excited tone. I hope it's not agitation. I hope it's just enthusiasm. Uh, anyway, your first point was um, where is life in the rest of the solar system? Well, um, the the Earth in our solar system anyway, the third rock from the sun as it were, is in the unique position to have the correct distance from our sun to have a liquid water environment um, that's unique in the solar system. As far as we can tell, uh, there's a couple of, uh, there might be liquid water on, what was it, Titan or Europa, one of the moons. Um, Mars is too cold, it's frozen. Venus is too hot, all of the water is steam, it's all in the clouds. Um, and as far as um, other liquid water sources in the solar system, the only other way that we're going to get that is by um, going to the moons of some of the gas giants out. So Saturn and Jupiter, their moons, and um, they won't be getting heat from the sun, they're too far away they'll be getting heat from internal friction, the, um, the, the gravity of their planet that they're orbiting is actually, it's like the tides on the oceans, how it, you know, bulges with the moon, they're orbiting their planet, and it actually has a tidal effect on the, the rock itself, and as you can imagine, mushing rock generates heat, and the heat will, it, it might be enough to melt the water, this is all speculative, um, we haven't seen it yet, but, you know, that's where, that's why Earth is unique in the solar system, is because we're the correct distance. If the sun was a different type of star, if it had a different temperature, then the Earth would have to be either closer or farther away. So if, if the sun was colder than it is, then, then life would possibly exist on Venus, or if the sun was hotter than it is, then life would possibly exist on Mars, or it could be um, some hotness in between, so that if a planet was in between Earth and Venus, or if a planet was in between Earth and Mars, there would be life on it, but there isn't a planet there, so there is no life in a solar system, and I would suspect that we'd, we'd find situations like that out in the uh, in the greater universe. Uh, let's take a look at some of the rest of your comments. <laughs> all of a sudden, so scary. Um, it is all of a sudden so scary about asteroids destroying civilization because we've just recently come to terms with it. We've just recently discovered it. It's uh, it's always been a threat. There have been several mass extinctions over the history of the Earth that have changed the geography of the planet and changed the, the, the variety of life on the planet several times over. Um, the most recent one, the one that killed the dinosaurs off 65 million years ago, laying um, the groundwork for the rise of the mammals and eventually us, was probably done by an asteroid that hit um, in the Yucatan Peninsula, part of the Yucatan, part of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so, you know, that's, that was 65 million years ago, and there have been several strikes since, not as large, obviously, and several strikes before. It's just a matter of time. There's no, you know, set thing. You also mentioned... Uh, randomness um, I don't think I mentioned randomness <clears throat> specifically because um, just because of my understanding of physics um, I I'm a pretty much a determinist maybe a quasi determinist <clears throat> you gave the example of a bullet getting fired and following a set trajectory yes that's that's exactly right, that follows new, uh, the Newtonian physical model, which actually can be uh, more correctly mapped using a relativity model that Einstein came up with.
but we still have another model that we have to deal with with the subatomic particles quantum mechanics we don't have a good way of bridging the two together uh, we're probably gonna have to figure out a new form of mathematics beyond calculus in order to bridge the bridge the gap so that we have one physical model of the universe instead of relativity for big stuff quantum mechanics for small stuff uh, as far as the randomness your citing randomness is strictly in the realm of quantum mechanics um, I would suspect though I don't have any proof of this just um, logically I would suspect that if we ever do branch relativity which is entirely cause and effect like event A happened happens which causes event B to happen and it could not go any other way so it's entirely cause and effect deterministic and then you've got this weird the quantum mechanical realm where particles that take multiple paths to get from point A to point B it's really we can't the human brain can't quite figure this stuff out you can represent it mathematically but um, it just doesn't it doesn't seem to make much sense to us because we we work in a in a Newtonian world you know cars and people bikes planes cats dogs stuff like that so to think about subatomic particles taking multiple paths to get to the same place it just you can't quite wrap your head around it so it's hard to it's hard to to get but um i suspect that as soon as we bridge the two physical models together that a lot of the randomness that we find in the quantum level will get either canceled out or um or uh, just minimized so maybe there actually is a, a a random effect to the universe but as far as uh, we're concerned as far as big stuff goes I would think that we would be mostly deterministic so that uh, randomness really has nothing to do with it and uh, from the moment of the creation of the universe um, the Big Bang seems like a good model to me of course you'll disagree but you know I'm not an astrophysicist, so I'm not going to argue the finer points with you. Uh, though I might get into the Doppler effect later if you're curious, and how the Big Bang arose from observation and not just some random s something that somebody pulled out of their ass. Um, uh, one more thing. You mentioned the, the design of the universe. The, the purpose of the stars was purely for human navigation we've got a we've got a serious misconception here we've got a misconception of scale the universe is fantastically huge and in this fantastic hugeness the earth is a minuscule little nothing to have the universe with all of its stars which are suns just like ours they come in a variety of different sizes but it's the same stuff with they have planets revolving around them and they're in their own galaxies just like we're in our galaxy to have them put there designed to put there purely for the point of our nautical navigation is asinine it's totally ludicrous. The the sizes we're dealing with here, you, I, you don't even, I don't think you can even know how small the Earth is in comparison to what's what's out there. The, the things that you see in the night sky are so far away, you can't even wrap your head around it. I know I can't wrap my head around it. It's it's too big for the brain, but we can we can study it and we can take measurements of it. But you you see design in something that I, I think you're you're misplacing intent. I think you're seeing in purpose where none exists. Uh, it's such an earth centric, specifically a Christian centric view of the world. I can't can't quite. I can't quite get it. Oh, I think you hurt me. <laughs>